El King's new album, Shake the Spirit, has been out for a couple of weeks. This is, and I'm sure you've heard this a million times, this is especially vulnerable, isn't it? Yeah, This interview? Well, I, I <laughs> certainly album. think so. <laughs> Am I covering up a little bit? <laughs> no, no, the album is very vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, it definitely is. But where do you draw that line between being personal and being private? Like, are there still things that you want to keep to yourself? Or is that part and parcel with being an artist? Do you have a responsibility? I have not found that yet. <laughs> I, I really, um, a lot of people are like, you're really sharing a lot. Um, but I don't know, I really... I wrote a lot of songs for this album and we kind of just picked the best ones that I thought were the best representation of the journey and the struggle and um, who I was making that. And um, I don't think I'd change a thing. I I, th- I think that it definitely tells a story mm-hmm. and I, I, I do like to tell stories in songwriting. Um, but... I don't know. Maybe next album I'll go a little lighter. Uh, <laughs> hopefully my life will be lighter by the You're time You're like, I okay, we've been through some stuff in this one. Let's yeah. talk about puppies and rainbows next yeah. time. Like next time it'll be a kid's album, third <laughs> album, definitely. <laughs> Mr. Rogers guest starring on it. Yeah. They could right? dig up some archival That's footage, fine. I'm sure. Come I on. Do you think, though, that vulnerability for some artists can be a crutch? It's definitely not a crutch for me. I, I would like to maybe be less personal, I don't know, or get better at um, my metaphors, maybe. (laughs) Uh, This is a pretty blunt record, I don't know. Yeah, no kidding. Lots of candor. Yeah. But I think that's part of the El King charm, right? Like part of this brand that you've built and and part of the person that you are. (sighs) Yeah, I don't know. I I really kind of can't even, I don't really control like what kind of comes out. It's just the message that comes through me, I guess. You're You're like the vehicle for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. sometimes and sometimes I'll really like try and be like witty with it, um, and other times I I really have no control over it, so I, I don't I don't really know. I can't help being this awesome. No. it is what it is. I'm Mel King. What's it's, up? It's just so true. Now, when you talk about versatility, we talk about this album being a little bit, you know, if you want to use the term darker, a little bit more vulnerable, a little rawer than the first one, you've opened for a lot of different bands. You've opened for the Dropkick Murphys, for Ed Sheeran, for Of Monsters and Men. Is that, do you think, a testament to your versatility? Is that, um, does that just make good marketing sense? You want to open yourself up to as wide an audience as possible? Or do you just want to expand your sphere? Do you want to learn as much as possible? I think, I mean, I've spent most of my career as an opener. um, And for me, it's always a challenge like that I take on and I can win I can win anybody over. <laughs> I really I really can. I mean from punk fans to pop fans to country, um, I mean to soul. I, I, I really like I consider it like something I have to do mm-hmm. and um, I do it. You know, and I think that an op- uh, an opener has a job. It's you start the show. You know, and people can scoff or whatever, but people will come to see openers, and mm-hmm. and it's an important duty. And it really has helped make me a performer. And I've learned everything that I know about touring from being an opener and watching and inc- the incredible bands that I've been so grateful and appreciative to you know be been taken on tour. But um, I don't know. I I f- I don't feel like I've had any tour that was like. Oh, the audience didn't like me, you know? <laughs> it's a challenge. Like, when people talk, I'm like, I'm going to get them to listen. But what's that common thread? Because at the end of the day, we're all people, regardless of what, you know, musical genre with which you most identify, and that's very personal for people. What's that, what's that common thread? I'm good. <laughs> I, I really do. You know, I'm, I'm a good performer. I put my whole heart into it. and. But even the charm, because you saying that, right now like it doesn't come off in a in an arrogant way it just comes off as confidence and i think that that's really ingratiating um i don't know what ingratiating means uh, it it means like you're you're able to really apparently i don't know what ingratiating means either it means you're really I'm able so to to kind of break down those walls with people and oh, really yeah. give really me a get barrier them, really and i'll fucking like no- oh sorry i'll i'll knock down a barrier can you bleep that out sorry oh, uh, Probably not. Oh, okay, good. This good, this good. is the internet. They're pretty. They're pretty oh, yeah, cool okay. with all of that. Fuck shit, cock balls. Um, <laughs> Jesus I, Christ. I, <laughs> I, you know, I got a lot to say, man. But um, I do pride myself in being a good showman. You know, I really, um, up until making this record, I I didn't. It's not that I didn't make the first record, but I I didn't 
I wasn't involved in every single aspect because I didn't know that I could. I didn't know I had good ideas. And so up until, you know, Shake the Spirit, touring and performing was my life. And I, I still put, like, I put everything into it. And it's also a really amazing release for me. Like, I, I can't sit still. And so I've had to find other things that are like... Oh, we can see. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I've had to find other ways or other forms of, like, meditation or transcendence or whatever. And and so performing has always been that. And, like like I said, I, I always take it on as, like, a challenge that I have to... I have to... It's not even about respect. I just, I just want people to listen. You know, they don't have to like me. I understand that I'm not going to be everyone's cup of tea. But I will... I will get you to listen. Do you think that in some senses music has been a bit of a double-edged sword for you? You know, you're so incredible at it and you've built this career out of it, but then you're thrust into the spotlight on your own accord all of a sudden. Yeah. That, I think, does certain things to you, and, and you've spoken about that in the past as well, but you've also spoken about the fact that, once again, getting back to music, that's helped you heal from it all. Yeah, totally. I mean, I did it to myself. I did it all to myself. <laughs> I, I, I oh, really, we, we all do. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, I never in a million years thought that X's and O's would do what it did. Um, and as much as it catapulted me, like... like There's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. Yeah, and um, a, a lot of hard work. And I don't, I don't know if a lot of people, e even in the last three years, like the whole YouTube like sensations and everything has changed our world drastically. How you get famous is not the same. And um, and so I don't know how much hard work that, not that I'm dissing like people who get famous on YouTube and stuff, but like it took a lot of hard work to get X's and O's to be what it, you know, to do what it did. And I really kind of lost some of my sanity because I just worked, 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 worked. I didn't eat, I didn't sleep. And all of it just kind of ate away my brain, my confidence, my spirit. And, um, and I, it just brought a lot of people around me that were nutso. And, um, and then, I don't know, when it came time to make the second record, I just was like trying to do this and make music through it. And it kind of broke down a lot of those walls that I'd created myself, so. But how know. do you find the balance? Like, how do you find the balance between working at your craft and, and dealing with being a rock star? And, and how do you deal with, you know, you and your personal life versus you and your public life? I don't know yet. <laughs> um, and is is that something that you can ever come to terms with? I mean, I don't know. I'm still a, a, I'm still uncomfortable by a lot of things, but um, I had to stop doing drugs. That was really making me nuts. Um, do they do that? Uh, I hear that <laughs> some rock stars do that. From what I've read. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. It's really made me. I, I've got a lot of anxiety, and um, I'm just trying to kind of, like, face it head on, I guess. Um, but part of that is part and parcel, I think, with, with being a millennial, right? Like, our generation, where it's all about instant gratification. It's like you alluded to this a few minutes ago, you know, being a celebrity online and, and, and celebrity for celebrity's sake and always wanting that feedback and that, you know, tell me how wonderful I am and how many yeah. Instagram likes that I get and all of that. I think that we're just inherently anxious. Totally. Totally, 100%. Um, but I'm anxious just because I'm weird. So I don't know. I really don't care that much about social media. Like, I do my own Instagram, but like I really don't obsess over it. Um, I I feel like if I did obsess over it, I, I don't know. I obsess. When I obsess, I obsess. So I really try to not go there. Um, but I don't know. I think that the whole world is going to shit. So I'm just going to keep trying to make music, and hopefully I can like keep doing it for a living. And we'll all keep a bunch of toilet paper handy. Yeah. <laughs> Disgusting. Thank you so much for your time. It was so great speaking with you today. Thanks for having me.